guys, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new, welcome. My name is Zoe, but most people know me as ZA Reptiles here on YouTube and on Instagram. And speaking of new things, I am filming on my brand new camera that my boyfriend got me to film these videos with. So thank you to my boyfriend for being my biggest sponsor. He didn't tell me to say that. I'm just kidding, yes he did. But anyway, this camera is so, so freaking awesome and it works with the ring light he got me so boyfriend of the year award so bear with me as i figure out how to use this camera um i'm hoping that it's looking okay um but we're gonna roll with it and i'm just gonna learn as i go so last summer i did a video all about quarantine what is quarantine why you should quarantine how to properly quarantine now I'm going to show you a real life, really good example of how to go about your day when you have animals in quarantine. Because currently I have three animals in quarantine. All three have different um, things going on. So I figured there was really no better time to show you guys a real example of quarantining animals then right now while well, I have three being quarantined. So if you didn't already watch my video all about quarantine, I will put that up here. I'm not sure which side it's gonna show on, but I will put that up there so you guys can go check that out, learn all about quarantine. And then this video is showing you a real life example of how to properly quarantine. So this first thing in the morning, I just got up, got dressed, got ready for my day. Now I'm going to start with the animals in my room. I'm going to do my morning routine. I'm going to feed them, give them water, spray them down, check them over. So whenever you are taking care of your animals, always start with your main section of animals, your main area, your main collection, whatever word you want to use to call your animals, your main family, whatever. Start with all of the pets that are already established and then you do your quarantined animals because if you don't want to take something from quarantine and bring it into the animals that are already established so first in the morning i'm starting off with the animals in here Okay, so now everyone has been fed and watered and spot cleaned. We're gonna move on to our quarantine animals. So I have three animals in quarantine. Now typically, people quarantine animals all in the same area. They have their main animal area and their quarantine area. I personally like to quarantine my quarantine animals separately from one another because technically the way you should quarantine is if you have an animal in quarantine and you bring in a new one, your quarantine period starts all over for both animals at zero. And I personally not like to have to restart an animal that's healthy and almost out of quarantine and bring in a sick animal and then expose a healthy animal that's almost in quarantine. If I can, I personally like to separate my quarantined animals. So all three of mine are currently separated. If my camera settings are adjusting, I'm sorry, I'm messing with it trying to figure out how this whole thing works um but anyway so we're gonna start with my blue tongue skink who you guys know about i talked about him in a video you guys haven't actually seen him yet but i did talk about him i told you guys that i got him his quarantine period has actually been done for a while i think um but he's still quarantined in my brother's room the reason for that being my dad and i are building enclosures and they're not done yet once he has an enclosure built, it'll go in here and he'll move in. And then his enclosure he's got now is a 40 gallon exoterra, will go to zero my milk snake. So his quarantine is actually done. He's just not in here. So he'll be the next one because he's healthy, he's good to go. So it is Thursday, so it is a feeding day for him. 
So I've got his snails up here, so we're gonna give him some snails today, and I'll probably bring him up some food later from downstairs in the kitchen. But I do keep his snails up here, so we'll give him some of that today. Uh, make sure he's fresh water, make sure there's no poops, make sure he looks good and his temps are good, and then we'll move on to the next one. What you doing? You're so cute. Do you want to kiss us? Want kiss us? Kiss us. Ooh, okay, bye. So the next quarantined animal that we are going to be taking care of is my Chinese water dragon. So this is one you guys haven't heard about yet. Um, I did recently take in a baby Chinese water dragon and I'm not going to get into the whole story. Once he's good and healthy, he'll have a video and I'll explain how I got him, um, what happened, yada yada yada. But for this video, I have a baby Chinese water dragon. When I, he was rehomed to me, he was in rough shape um, and he ended up developing a respiratory infection and he had layers of stuck shed and all this craziness um, for a while there. He was not looking so hot. Um, there was one day where I wasn't sure he was going to make it toward to the end of the day, but we started doing a DIY at home treatment and we got him antibiotics from the vet. Um, by the end of the day, he was a totally different lizard. He was all perked up, he was beautiful, and he's jumping around, he's very energetic, and he's been like that ever since. So it looks like we are on the mend. However, because he was diagnosed with respiratory infection and he's on antibiotics, he is quarantined. He's the second quarantine that we go to after the skink because the skink is healthy. So after the skink, Chinese water dragon. So I go in, make sure he's got water refill his food, um, give him his antibiotics, and clean. So today we're definitely going to be doing a paper towel change because it's got a couple poops on it. So we're going to change all of that, um, spray him down to raise up his humidity. So you'll notice he is in a 20 gallon long and these are arboreal lizards. He is so tiny that I quite frankly don't think that this 20 gallon long is bad at all for him. Um, he does have a different enclosure. I had to order a lid for it that has come in. He will be getting that new enclosure soon. This 20 gallon long works fine right now. Okay, so after going to my sister's room and taking care of the Chinese water dragon, we move on to the last one, and this is the really, really important one. So my ball python, Snicket, has mites, like really, really bad. Don't know how he got them, don't know where they came from. He's been soaking all week, but it looked like he was in shed. You know, I have gave him a bigger water dish, I have refilled it a couple times, I never saw anything. Um, a couple people and my boyfriend mentioned that maybe it was his bedding. I don't know how long it takes for my eggs to hatch. Um, I spot clean his enclosure whenever there's a poop. Just like all my snakes after every feeding, I look for poops and I spot clean. Um, so I'm really not sure how he got them and how he got them so bad. Like they were horrible. I felt so bad for him. Thankfully, none of my other animals look like they have them. 
you know, my snakes that were around him, they've been soaked. They're on paper towel now, just so I can monitor them and make sure they don't have it all. Um, but so far, everyone looks totally fine. So the fact that he had them that bad and no one else got them, I am grateful. I still feel so, so bad for him though. Hi right, guys, just a little note from present day Zoe. It has been one week, just over a week, since I filmed this video. Crikey and Kalua did also end up having mites. Not as bad as Snicket though, um, but they did join him down in quarantine. Everyone else is clear. They've all been treated and switched to paper towels that have been treated. Um, the only ones that have not been are my bioactives and Tinsel, my sunbeam, because that would be very stressful for her. Um, but other than that, everyone's looking good. It looks like we might have the mite problem under control now, but we are going to keep up with it for a couple weeks or a couple months um, just to try to keep on top of their life cycle. But when we beat this and everything's cleared up, we'll have a whole video on it because, you know, he's only had one treatment. I caught it yesterday. He's only had one treatment and after that one treatment, it was amazing. So I'm hopeful that if we keep up with it, these will be gone very soon. But, so when you have an animal with mites, mites can transfer very easily. They don't fly, they don't jump, they don't hop, but they can move quite a distance. And they're a parasite, so they do bite your animals. It's very uncomfortable for them. It's irritating. They hang around the eyes and the nose, the mouth, the vent, and he was just covered. So when you have an animal with mites, it's very important that you keep that animal completely far away from other animals. Like even your quarantined animals, I would keep an animal with mites away from them as well. So Snicket is currently quarantined in our basement. So we moved him down there to be quarantined. You know, no one goes down there. It's nice and dark, nice and quiet. So he's down there <clears throat> so he's down there now when it comes to mites that is the last animal you want to touch because you yourself can transport mites they can get on your clothes on your hands on your skin and then you transport them to your other animals so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to um, have my breakfast do my workout and then do another treatment for Snicket because when you treat an animal with mites you literally want to strip down and take a shower after so I'm gonna get my workout in that way I'm good to go I'm ready to shower we'll give him another treatment and then I will shower and then I will not touch Snicket again and that is how I go about my day when I have animals in quarantine so hopefully this is helpful for you guys um, one more thing I want to mention is after you do anything with an animal quarantine or any animal, you want to wash your hands because that prevents transmission of anything. So when I'm done with the skink, I wash my hands. When I'm done with the water dragon, I wash my hands. So as much as you can do to keep everything clean and separated, do it. The other thing is quarantine. The quarantine period is supposed to be after they're healthy. So once the Chinese water dragon has no more respiratory infection, he's going to be in quarantine still for another 30 days. Once Snicket has no more mites, he'll still be quarantined for quite a while just to make sure there's no more mite eggs that are going to hatch or anything. Um, so they need to be problem free for 30, 60, 90 days, however long you want your quarantine period to be. So hopefully you guys found this helpful, um, you kind of saw what I was talking about in my about quarantine video with this kind of real life example. And yeah, so thank you guys for watching, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it or you learned something, hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss another video, and as always, thank you guys and we'll see you for the next video.